Good evening, folks. First, if you have not noticed that the world seems to be going crazy, please ask someone close to you for help lifting up the rock under which you've been living. Politically, culturally, economically, there's an idiocracy building in the world today, and there are no shortage of reasons to be stressed, to feel squeezed, to feel like the world you knew, and which at least made a bit of sense, is falling apart all around you. But in addition to the obvious, what you see on TV, there's something else affecting every living creature on this planet, and human complex thought and brain systems are extremely vulnerable to it. On top of everything else on our shoulders, our ability to carry that weight is under attack. The magnetic poles of this planet are shifting faster and faster, and with them, the overall magnetic field strength protecting the planet is weakening. We lost 10% of that field in 150 years, then five more from only 2000 to 2010, and the experts said we had gone from losing 5% of the field per century to 5% per decade. We are now more than 20% down, and the shift continues. This is important because we all live in an electromagnetic environment, not only our bodies themselves, but the Earth, the atmosphere, the global electric circuit, the geomagnetic field. We've spent copious amounts of time on the channel reviewing the physiological impacts to our bodies, but the brain and cognition are not immune, with hundreds of studies confirming this concept as well. The weakening magnetic field of Earth means that we are even more vulnerable to the electromagnetic effects of space weather, solar flares, geomagnetic storms, and cosmic rays. In Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, Chapter 6, we compiled many of the relevant studies, which show that both the particle impacts and electromagnetic fields produced by space weather have intimate interaction with our brains. Cognitive defects, emotional instability, neuroinflammation, and some of the details are profound. Anxiety amplification has been repeatedly studied and confirmed, with in vivo animal studies now elucidating the mechanisms driving the many times noted statistical correlations. Specific impacts to the hippocampus, and especially the locus ceruleus, which affects our ability to deal with panic, anxiety, and fear, were well established even before those mechanisms were discovered in physical form. These vulnerabilities are increasing by the day as our magnetic field weakens, and they are added on top of a world seemingly spiraling out of control, which is also quite stressful. Some of the most basic signs of the sickness are easy to see. And while you may instantly jump to the Bible when reading some of these, recognize they are also found in other religious texts describing these times and the papers in the journals from psychologists, psychiatrists, and biologists. Major changes in thinking, especially related to those you love, is a prime example. It's really not all that unlike the rebellious and arrogant anger of a teenager whose brain is changing. If you feel those changes for your spouse, your children, if you find yourself trying to peg a rationale on minutia that never stopped you from loving them or being there for them before, you should take serious note. Temptation is where I'm hoping you can either find a correlation to your faith or look past that concept to realize this is legit science. Temptation affects everyone and it's natural. But you should also be aware of it and how you are usually affected, how you've been affected throughout your life. And if you are feeling the pull to a greater and greater degree than usual, this is where I hope to communicate from the heart and not offend you. No, the sexual revolution and ultra strong drug awakening people are having is not legit. The good feelings they bring are band-aids masking deeper issues, and they are not the answer to your finding yourself, happiness, or salvation. And finally, an overwhelming sense of fear and hopelessness is gripping the world in addition to the anger and frustration, and nobody can really be blamed for that. But this reinforces the first three, and yet, for someone who sees the bigger picture, this should be recognizably antithetical to the paradigm unfolding. If you find yourself doing things you know are wrong, or if you don't see it as right or wrong, doing things you wouldn't otherwise do, especially high-risk behavior. You need to resist the urge to say to yourself, well, maybe this is all natural, why not just go with it and see where the wind takes me? To think it is you letting go of your previous conceptions and restrictions is utterly incorrect and dangerous. For those who aren't into the religious side of things, do you believe in body energy, chakras, magnetic personalities, 
affirmations, the effects of positive or negative attitude, the energy and power of crystals or certain rocks or locations on the earth. Know this, if any of those things have any merit, so does the soul. And that means this place has rules. You don't get to pick and choose where it fits your mood or reflects upon your behavior. That is called being a child, being a hypocrite. It's one of the primary reasons we're seeing so many problems today. But alas, knowledge is power, and there will be some of you watching this who will be able to see perspective and overcome these hardships without crumbling. You know, the placebo effect is real, and it can help. It does go both ways, so know that your thoughts, words, attitude, and outlook have powerful potential to influence yourself and the people around you. There are some who will breeze through this with minimal effect, whether by strength of body or mind or soul, but there are also very, very clear indicators of increased vulnerability, and any psychologist worth the paper on which their degree is printed will tell you that combining these vulnerabilities is the worst idea. Unhealed trauma from parents, work, childhood interactions like bullying, past relationships, or physical harm. It's critical. The best summarization of this statement is that the mind can temporarily forget, but the body keeps the score forever. Drugs and alcohol, including many prescribed drugs, will only enhance this. I am aware that my audience includes big fans of cannabis and even hallucinogens, but even those are not bulletproof, and the intentional nature of their use is where they can be helpful. But that is quite elusive amidst the traumatized, the lost, the suffering, and they can and often do exacerbate traumatic issues, again, as a band-aid, if nothing else. Negative influences are difficult because they tell you what you want to hear. The yes man, the comforting voice telling you to embrace these new feelings, everything is okay, you're not going crazy, that your long-term steadfast patterns are toxic, and yes, it's a great trick, but it is also unequivocally true that they usually just reinforce poor decisions, poor thinking, and poor attitude. How about that last one? Poor diet and poor mental attitude. There are ties into the substance abuse issues listed above, but it's also a separate beast. Your body has protection built in that can help fight the negative, hold the line, stay the course, but they require a healthy body and mind, and without them, or in combination with these other risk factors, you are left utterly vulnerable. At the end of the day, when you realize that the world is in fact a bit rage-inducing, confusing, and often senseless, when you realize that the earth and sun are not exactly being friendly to the situation, and then when you look at what you are doing and thinking, I hope you realize how at risk we are. And all of a sudden, a piece of the puzzle of why the world is going the way it's going manifests before your eyes. Sorry to say, don't expect this to change. It's only getting worse. Be strong, have eyes open, and no fear. Be safe, everyone.